If they had told you that Vladimir Putin would surpass Joseph Stalin as Russia's longest serving leader, would you have believed it? Well, here we are. It's no longer news that Vladimir Putin has won re-election as president of Russia with an unprecedented 88% of the vote. This allows him to surpass Joseph Stalin himself as Russia's longest ruling leader in over 200 years. Let that sink in for a second. How does a president preside over Europe's largest conflict since World War II, invading a neighboring democracy, and yet still earn a landslide re-election victory? Well, this outcome was hardly a surprise to those familiar with Putin's systematic representation of dissent over 23 years of iron-fisted rule. could be no any negotiations and nothing with Mr. Putin because he is a killer, he is a gangster. Many Russians faced the risk of arrest to protested recoronation and jailed critic Alexei Navalny's widow Yulia denounced the sham vote. Putin's security forces silenced the outcry through force. People came to create the conditions for internal political consolidation to move forward. This unity will allow us to act effectively on the front line, in the economy, humanitarian development, achieving the goals of social development projects. We have huge development plans. People felt that and came to create the conditions for development and the strengthening of their fatherland, Russia. Because when the Kremlin congregated its rubber-stamped candidates and unveiled its official tally, an unbelievable 88% for Putin, the message was clear. Dissent is futile. Putin has won. And in a draw-dropping departure, Putin actually uttered Alexei Navalny's name publicly for the first time since the activist's mysterious prison death, calling it sad. But just how sad was the Kremlin's leading antagonist's demise? That revelation is where our story truly begins. Before we dive into the seismic implications of Putin's re-election, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel Declassified for more hard-hitting analysis. Dear friends, I salute you and I congratulate you on this wonderful day of the rejoining of Sevastopol and Crimea with Russia exactly 10 years ago. No matter how hard they tried to scare us, suppress our will or conscious, no one has ever succeeded in history they failed now, and they will fail in the future. Those were Putin's defiant words as he celebrated an almost unfathomable 88% re-election victory. A mandate he claims will allow Russia to become stronger and more effective. But how was this apparent landslide achieved? Well, the process reeked of the same authoritarianism that's preserved Putin's reign for over two decades. First, there was an absurdly long voting window three full days for Russians to cast ballots, with even more time granted in Russian-occupied territories of Ukraine. Officials boasted that this allowed for advanced online voting, bringing in 8 million votes. While denigrating America's use of mail-in ballots, Putin hailed Russia's elections as transparent and absolutely objective. As if you can believe a word he says, after he claimed, with a straight face, that in the US, you can buy a vote for $10. The facade of democracy included trotting out three token opposition candidates who openly fawned over Putin. There was the Communist Party's Nikolai Karitonov, who scored just 4.6% while praising the president for consolidating the nation. Liberal Leonid Slutsky from the ironically named Liberal Democratic Party eked out 3%, while Vladislav Davankov from the New Party People secured 4.2%, probably after failing to attract, you know, actual new people. These obvious Putin stooges were no real threat, especially with Russians in occupied Ukrainian lands like Zaporizhia, Kherson, Donetsk, Luhansk, and Crimea being forced to vote at gunpoint. So it was no surprise when Putin's landslide re-election was announced with 88%, allowing him to overtake Stalin as Russia's longest ruler. Officials trumpeted a nationwide record of 74.22% turnout as well. And get this, Putin actually acknowledged the recently deceased opposition leader Alexei Navalny in his victory speech, calling his death a sad event while claiming there was an offer to swap Navalny to the West days before he perished in prison. Hmm, makes you wonder what really happened there. After that outrageous election process, it's no wonder the international community roundly condemned Putin's re-coronation. 
In Germany, they rightly called it a pseudo-election under an authoritarian ruler. I mean, how can any rational person accept those results as legitimate? Britain's Foreign Secretary Lord Cameron went even further, blasting the illegal holdings of elections on Ukrainian territory. You know, those areas Putin's forces have brutally occupied like Crimea and parts of Donetsk. President Zelensky of Ukraine didn't mince words either, referring to Putin as a Russian dictator, simply simulating another election. Because, let's be real folks, that's exactly what this fake exercise was. A total simulation. And one of Alexei Navalny's top allies, Leonid Volkov, summed it up perfectly, stating the percentages drawn for Putin have, of course, not the slightest relation to reality. He is absolutely right. Those numbers were plucked clearly from Putin's delusions. Just imagine, this authoritarian thug invades a neighboring democracy, bombing civilians for over a year. His military is humiliated on the battlefield repeatedly, yet he still somehow wins 88% of the vote? I have a hard time suspending that much disbelief, you all. It's almost like Putin exists in his own twisted reality at this point, where up is down, truth is fiction, and elections are mere theatrical performances to legitimize his iron grip on power. Look, I'm no Russian expert, but even an idiot like me can see this election was a complete and utter sham from start to finish. Literally, zero credibility whatsoever. The bigger question is, what does Putin's tightening authoritarian rule mean for the West and the world going forward? Will he feel emboldened to double down on his military aggression? And if so, how should the international community respond to this overt rejection of democracy and human rights? Hmm. Those implications could be earth-shattering, folks. So buckle up, because I have a feeling the drama and intrigue are just getting started with this Putin guy. Things are going to get really, really, really interesting. Now that we've carefully analysed the sham victory for what it is, it's time to talk about the implication. Because, make no mistake, Putin's tightening authoritarian grip will absolutely ripple across the world stage. First off, expect zero change in Russia's combative foreign policy under the new Putin. We're talking about continued tensions with the United States on every front imaginable. Election meddling? Check. Rogue cyber attacks? You know it. Differing stances on global flashpoints like Syria and Ukraine? Those aren't going away anytime soon. When it comes to European security, you can practically hear the panic bells ringing from the Baltic states all the way to Ukraine's borders. With Putin unchecked and his territorial ambitions clear, no one is safe from potential Russian aggression or subversion. That's why you can bet your bottom dollar NATO is on high alert. How can the Alliance trust a man who's obliterated Ukraine's sovereignty on a flimsy pretext? Expect a serious re-evaluation of defense postures and spending. Then there's the question of economic warfare. The West has already pummeled Russia with wave after wave of biting sanctions over Ukraine. With this election rejecting diplomacy, those sanctions could ratchet up to truly crippling levels for Moscow. Speaking of Ukraine, Putin's stance towards that smouldering conflict shows zero signs of softening. If anything, this emboldens him to potentially escalate into the Donbass or even strike out towards Odessa. And don't forget those other frozen conflicts Russia's meddled in from Georgia to Moldova. The West will be contending with those crises for the foreseeable future. But the implications stretch far beyond Europe. You can be sure Putin will be leaning even harder into his bromance with Xi Jinping, using Russia's resource and military might as a counterweight to Western dominance across Asia and the world. In the Middle East, you can forget about Putin pulling a 180 on his support for butcher Bashar al-Assad and his patrons in Iran. With this election solidifying his hardline policies, Russia's footprint in Syria is only going to expand. Ultimately, the biggest geopolitical shift here is the death knell for Putin's already frosty relations with the US-led liberal international order. With this power grab, he sent a clear middle finger to the institutions like the UN, to the rule of law, to human rights, and to democracy itself. We're talking about a full-fledged challenge to the Western ideals and norms that have preserved relative peace and prosperity since 1945 an overt rejection of the global rules-based system birthed from the ashes of World War II. So in that sense, this sham election is about way more than just Russia. It's an authoritarian pushing back against liberal democracy and self-determination as a whole. An ominous sign of if and how the 21st century world order could unravel into chaos. Now, I'm not saying we're on the brink of World War III here, but make no mistake, this powder keg has an extensively long fuse lit underneath it. To be honest, at this point, 
it may be safe to say the geopolitical shockwaves are just getting started. But you know what would be the wildest implication of Putin's re-coronation? The man is now 70 years old. What if the sham election is actually setting the stage for him to establish a straight up dynasty in Russia? Think about it for a second. Taken the cronyism and cult of personality surrounding most modern authoritarians and dialed it up to 11. Could this landslide victory just be him solidifying the foundation to anoint a successor from his inner circle someday? A new Russian emperor will continue amassing wealth and power for Putin's clan, free from term limits or accountability to the people. It sounds outlandish, but then again, so did the notion of him ruling for over two decades when he first took power. And that's perhaps the biggest indictment of this entire situation. Under Putin's ironclad system, the wildly undemocratic has simply become the new norm in Russia. Dissent is a recreational activity, like trying to beat the house in a rigged casino. So while we can debate the nuances and finer implications all day, the overarching truth is that Putin has plunged Russia into deepening authoritarianism that ultimately serves only him and his cronies. The Russian people have been drained of any real voice, just as Ukraine has been drained of its sovereignty. All in the pursuit of one man's increasingly delusional ambitions of restoring Soviet-era influence and glory. It's an ambition that has turned Russia into a rogue destabilizing force on the world stage. One that is diametrically opposed to liberal Democrats' ideals of freedom, human rights, and rules-based order. You see, this sham election represents an overt, conscious doubling down on that rogue path for Russia under Putin's continued leadership. A path that would profoundly shape the geopolitical trajectory of the 21st century. So, as dire as the implications may seem, at least there's one consolation. We'll never have to wonder what a real-life supervillain's origins look like. We are living through it with the reascension of Vladimir Putin. The storm clouds are gathering, folks. But don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the thunderbolts that are sure to come next. Bye for now, and see you in the next one.